Hi, this is a quick uh, tutorial to show you how to use an IQA to update and or insert data into your MS database. I'm going to be using the data management suite and I'm going to be using the import from IQA. You might be looking at this and that tab might say I update. That's because what we're, that's what we're renaming it in December. So I'm going to choose from IQA and now I'm going to choose my IQA that I'm going to use. Please remember your IQA has to return at least one record in order to actually set up the data management suite. It's not going to be able to read the data or the fields from the IQA unless it returns at least one record. So I have an IQA out here called expired members and this is all of my members that have expired. And I have set it up to pull everybody with a join date of less than today and a member type equal to M. So I'm going to select that. It's pulled in my IQA. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide, are we creating new records? Are we updating? Are we updating or creating? We're actually going to be updating the name table. I want to set these from member to non-member, but I am going to be creating an activity at the same time. So I'm going to choose update or create. And the first thing I'm going to do is choose my ID field, and that is going to map to contact IMIS ID. And it's going to be a match on because I'm going to be matching on the record in IMIS. So I save that. My next thing that I want to do is I want to take the member type field from the name table, if you will, and I want to make that into non-member. Now, your IQA could return the member type you want to set them to, but I'm going to make them into non-members and I already know the code. Okay, so this is going to run right now. Find everybody with a matching ID in the IQA and set their member type to non-member. Great, but I want to add an activity as well. <clears throat> so. Next thing we're gonna do is add a mapping and I'm gonna jump over to activities. And I'm gonna choose my IMIS ID. This is very important, okay? That is actually going to match with the ID that is in my IQA as well. And that is going to be a match on. This is important. We want the data management suite to automatically say, hey, you're inserting an activity, but only where it doesn't already exist. We're not updating activities, we're inserting. So we wanna say match on. What's gonna happen is the data management suite is gonna say, oh, I can't match on that, so I'm going to insert because this is an update or create. So we hit save. Our next thing that we wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make the activity type, if you will, in this case. Uh, a drop activity type that I've already made in my IMS database. I'm gonna match on that as well because once again, you should only have one drop activity on the actual day, if you will. So next up, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna choose a, let's see, what should we do here? We're gonna go and um, we're gonna make a, uh, let's see, um, we're gonna add one more mapping and I want to use the paid through date. Uh, actually, no, I do not want to. Yes, I want to make the effective date of this drop, if you will. And I want that to be the same thing as their paid through. That's coming from the IQA. Ultimately, I'm making an activity that's created on the day they expired, which is their paid through. I'm matching on that as well. Once again, I wanna make sure this is an activity that doesn't already exist. Last thing I might wanna add is a description for this activity, and I'm just gonna write it in here and say dropped for lack of payment. And I'll even match on that. I don't have to, in fact, I'm not gonna. <clears throat> so you can see here, we're matching on the ID in the contact table, and we're gonna set the member type to non-member. We're also going to the activity table, and we're matching on that, right? We're looking for an activity type of drop. We're matching on the ID. We're matching on the pay through and we're saying drop for lack of payment. This says if this activity doesn't already exist, then go ahead and add it. I'm gonna save these mappings and I'm gonna call this demo of member drop and add activity. All right, notice that you have some other options out here. Uh, don't forget about these. You can go ahead and skip the light validations we do or automatically continue. If you're doing a large import and you want it to run overnight, you can automatically continue on error and there, if there's an error, it won't stop. But a lot of people want it to stop. They want to know what went wrong and stop the import and fix it. 
Uh, ignore blank values on import file. It means that the data is blank in the import file, but not in IMS. It will not overwrite. And then, of course, you can blank out data with a special key there. So I'm going to save it. That has been saved. I'm going to submit or schedule as a task. This is going to be our iScheduler product where you can schedule this to run on a regular basis. We have that in there now. But I'm going to submit this here. And we get some notifications down. Existing contact fields being set member type where the ID matches and an activity is going to be created but only if it matches so continue with update or create goes out here it runs my IQA it finds everybody who has expired in this case I have oops my manager record just got its ID changed <clears throat> I might encourage you to set your IQA to not um, touch the manager record if you will in my case, I forgot to do that, but that's a good uh, lesson, so I'll leave it in here. And Robert Alves Morris is our one person who has uh, since expired. And now if we go and we look into IMIS, and we go out here and we find our contact, and we find Robert Morris. Please note, I'm using Australian date formats these days. I've switched. He expired on March 31st. All right, and we can see he is now a non-member, and this is going to be logged in the change log and all of that because it was all done with the REST API. So that's how to add an activity. Uh, any questions, uh, please email support at csiinc.com.